my videos just so that you have it fresh in your mind. And this will help you understand the way that we plan our outline, the way that we write our essay, and the words that we use, and so on and so forth. So the first thing you'll have to keep in mind with the writing section of the IELTS exam is your task achievement. Basically, you need to fully answer your question and present it in a fully developed answer. In this case, with problem and solution writing prompts, you'll have to make sure that you are stating the problems when necessary and providing enough solutions for your essay. Don't worry, we're going to go through this together, but this is what task achievement would look like in the problem and solution essay. Second, you'll want to make sure that everything makes sense so that you are focusing on coherence and cohesion. This means that you don't have a problem and a solution and then another problem and a solution that relates back to your first problem in that order. You want to make sure that you clearly separate your problems and your solutions and that your solutions make sense for the problems that you discuss in your essay. So these two points here will be clearly outlined in our outline that we make in just a few minutes. And that's why an outline is so important in the writing section. The third and fourth points are points that go together and they rely on your outside knowledge. This includes lexical resource and your grammatical range and accuracy. Basically your lexical resource will include all of your vocabulary that you choose to use, your synonyms, phrasal verbs, idioms, collocations. You want to make sure that your essay is virtually error free. And this could sort of be put on the back burner when students are really stressed out about making sure they get all of the points in task achievement and coherence and cohesion. Again, if you make an outline and we are well prepared for our essay, you can spend some time on your lexical resource without freaking out about these two points above. And of course, you want to make sure that your grammar is correct and that you're using various different types of forms perhaps present perfect, past simple, past perfect, when appropriate, and when you feel comfortable that you can really show the examiner your knowledge in grammar. Okay, so this is the scoring. Now I'd like to show you exactly how we are going to tackle this problem and solution essay. So our guide is going to include a couple of steps. The first thing, of course, is reading the prompt, making sure we understand the type of essay we have to write. Remember, there are six types of essays. And we can underline keywords in order to already allow us to start thinking of potential ideas to include in the essay, potential words, potential synonyms. I'll show you how to do this in the next step. After you've done that, you'll want to plan your outline. Now, for the problem and solution essay type, I mentioned that there are three different outlines that can be used. This depends on the question. Uh, in just a few minutes, I'm going to take you through the three different types of outline and show you three different types of questions that would best fit those outlines. But after we plan our outline, we're going to make outline notes. And these will be phrases and words that will call our attention to what we're going to write in our test booklet. So we're already going to make a brief outline so we're prepared and we can focus the majority of our time actually writing the essay in a clear way without being nervous and without trying to fit everything in. That's why these three steps, this guide, will really help you tackle this problem. With time and expertise and a lot of practice, you should be able to do all of this in about five minutes maximum. And trust me, it'll make a world of difference. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our question. All right, so I hope you're ready because this is the question we're going to be working with today. First, I'll just go ahead and read it through once. And then the second time, I'll read it through and underline any keywords. Remember, when you do this, you can save on your time, read and underline at the same time the first time. I just want to make sure that everything is clear as we go through this together. Okay, so in the developed world, the average life expectancy is increasing. What problems will this cause for individuals and society? Suggest some measures that could be taken to reduce the impact of aging populations. All right, so that's our question. Let's read it again. And as we read it, I'm going to highlight the key words. 
So in the developed world, this is actually quite important because we're talking about a specific type of country, developed world. We're not talking about third world countries, for example. Developed world is what we have to be focusing on, okay? The average life expectancy. I would say this is also important because it's our subject and it is increasing. Now, what problems, this is important because it gives us a clue as to what type of essay we have to write. Will this cause for individuals and society? So I'm looking at problems for individuals as well as society. I already know there are two problems here that I should be looking at. Just some measures that could be taken to reduce, I'll say this is important, the impact of aging populations. And I'll go ahead and highlight aging populations. Now, the fact that we see measures also is a good clue that this is a problem and solution essay. The wording can be a bit tricky because the exam wants to trick you into perhaps writing the incorrect essay or focusing on just problems instead of solutions. I talked about this earlier. This is something that the examiners will look for when they're scoring your essay. Basically, were you able to include both the problems and the solutions in your essay. It's very important. So don't get thrown off by words like measures when really they just want you to think of solutions. So now I have two questions for you, and this is what you should be asking yourself when you read the prompts in your writing exam. You wanna ask yourself two things. The first, what type of essay will I need to write? And just from reading it over and underlining your keywords, you should be 100% confident that this is a problem and solution essay, okay? So be prepared for these outlines, which we'll get into in just a moment, and the layout of your essay. Second, how familiar am I with this topic? This will depend on the test taker, but keep in mind that the keywords will help you assess your knowledge on the topic. So really think about everything you know when it comes to aging populations in the developed world. If you find that you don't know anything about this topic, start brainstorming and start thinking of potential problems and potential solutions. Just create them. And if you're a creative person, this will work in your favor. If you're not a creative person and you don't like thinking on your feet, the thing I would tell you is just to keep practicing and try to expose yourself to as many questions as possible to as many writing prompts as possible before the exam. All right, now I'm going to show you three different outlines, uh, A, B, and C. Keep in mind for this question, we are going to use outline C, but I want to introduce you to other types of outlines because this question could appear differently on the exam. So let's go ahead and look at our three outlines. We're going to look at three different questions and three different outlines. So again, A, B, and C. We're going to start with outline A, and I'll just call your attention to the question here. It says, what problems do children face in the age of social media? What should be done to address or solve these various concerns? So this is clear in that it says problems, solve, and it's clear that we have to write a problem solution essay. This is actually one of the clearest problem and solution writing prompts that I've seen. Usually they're a bit trickier. So this is a very clear outline. I would suggest coming up with two problems and two solutions just to fulfill your 250 word minimum. It's quite rare that someone will be able to write in depth and detailed about just one problem and one solution. Also, Examiners like to see a varied range in your problems and your solutions because it shows that you are able to think of different situations in a short amount of time in your 40 minute time frame. So in this case, you could have a paragraph for your introduction, a paragraph for two problems that children face in the age of social media, a paragraph with two solutions that solve these problems, and then your conclusion paragraph. This is quite simple. Outline B is a bit different. Let's go ahead and read this. 
Traffic congestion is becoming a major problem for global cities. Analyze and present some measures that could be taken to reduce traffic in these cities. Now, just like our writing prompt that we're using today, we see the word measures. You know it's very common. Another way to say solutions. So in this case, the problem is clear. It's traffic congestion. You don't have to think of any problems because it's given to you in the prompt. And the question is explicitly asking that you think of some measures. The fact that this says some is very important and it means that you have to adjust your outline and you'll have to adjust your essay and focus more on your solutions. So in this case, I would have an introduction paragraph. Your second paragraph would just be the problem paragraph that is already stated in your writing prompt. So you don't have to necessarily think of any new problems, perhaps just elaborate a bit on traffic congestion, but don't introduce anything new necessarily. And then you'll have two separate paragraphs for two distinct solutions to the problem. And then you would close with a conclusion. So in this case, you would have five separate paragraphs. Remember, your introduction and your conclusion are not the focal point of your essay. So in this case, you'd really want your focal point to be these two paragraphs here of your solution. So you'd want to spend some time really thinking about different measures that could be taken to aid traffic congestion. If, for example, in this situation, a student focuses on the problems instead of the solutions, they would be docked points severely in the task achievement portion of the scoring. That's why you always should be ready to really dissect this question, this writing prompt, and choose from your outlines. All right, let's go to the last outline, which is the one we're going to use today, and that is outline C. Now I've prepared a different writing prompt, but we'll read it together. Explain some of the ways in which humans are damaging the environment. What can governments do to address these problems? What can individual people do? So you see these two questions here at the end, very important. So in this case, the question has already presented two different parts of both the problem and the solution. So the problem here is that humans are damaging the environment. And you have to think of what governments can do and what individual people can do. And don't forget, it also says, explain some of the ways. So when it says some of the ways or some of the measures, keep in mind that they are wanting you to discuss more than one. Some is always more than one. So in this case, our first paragraph would be the introduction as always. Our second paragraph would be talking about problems, one and two. In this case, you have to think of problems one and two. And you also have to think of your two solutions. And that's why this outline is considered the trickiest. It's also the most common because it's difficult and there's a lot for you to do in order to get your task achievement score to the highest that it can be. So you'll have to think of two problems, two ways in which humans are damaging the environment. And we can put this in one paragraph because again, the test takers are most interested in your ability to create solutions in the amount of time you're given for this writing prompt. So you'll want to focus your energy and your time on creating two solutions for these two problems. And that's why the solutions have their own designated paragraph. One will be devoted to talking about what governments can do, and one will be devoted to discussing what individual people can do. So that's the difference here. When you have two of these questions like this, it's best to use two different paragraphs just to make sure that everything is organized and that you're getting points in your coherence and cohesion. And then of course, we would close with a conclusion. Now keep this fresh in your mind. I'm going to take you back to our writing page so we can start making our outline. Okay, now here we are with our outline. You'll recognize the red headings. This is what we just looked at at the previous slide. 
And I've just filled in the various sentences and topics that I'll be using. So with our introduction, I'm going to have a rewritten question. This is basically me stating what is in the writing prompt. I'm just going to use different words and different synonyms to give my essay a great opening that is on target for the writing prompt. Then I'm going to introduce my specific topics. Your introduction and also your conclusion these um, opening and closing paragraphs should not be more than three sentences, okay, more or less as a guide. Now my second paragraph is going to be my two problems, because if we go back to the question, it says what problems, and that's plural, so I know that I'm going to have to discuss two problems. So I'm going to have the, a topic sentence just to open up my paragraph in a general way that is on target with the writing prompt. I'll have my two problems, B and D, but I'll have an example of the problem underneath the explanation. So you see this is just five sentences in this order. Basically it's problem, example, problem, example. It's foolproof and you'll get everything you need in this paragraph. The third paragraph will be my first solution because remember, suggest some measures, so that's plural. My first solution will be about three to five sentences long with my topic sentence, and again, my explanation, and then an example. It's just that in this case, I'm talking about a solution. Then my solution two is basically the same thing, just with different information. And the conclusion is a summary of my main points that I talked about in the passage, and then something important about the topic. You don't want to just close with a general in-conclusion statement that I see very often. You want to leave the examiner with perhaps another direction that the passage could go in or another thought that ties everything nicely with a bow. It's like you want to give this gift of all of your information and something important that you can leave the reader with. I'll talk about this later when we write our essay on the right-hand side. All right, so this is our generic outline. Now we're going to make our outline notes. And these outline notes will depend on your information and what you choose to write about. I'm just going to go off of my keywords and information that I have regarding developed countries and aging population. Remember, the more you're reading outside of your test preparation, the more ideas you'll have, so don't worry too much about that. So I'm just going to start here and make notes. Keep in mind that this doesn't have to be grammatically correct just yet. Um, you just need this to think about your various ideas and brainstorm for writing. So I'm basically going to rewrite this first sentence here. And basically I'm going to write life expectancy is increasing in developed society. Now you don't have to change every single word. So note that I use the life expectancy because it's a general term and it's something that I can't really change at this point, but developed society instead of developed world is on the right track. Now, introduction of my specific topics, I'm going to talk about the negative effects, so the problems, but also potential solutions. I'm basically going to say there are problems and negative effects associated with life expectancy increasing, but there are also solutions. My topic sentence I'm going to leave like this for now. I'll worry about that when I'm writing the essay. B, for my detail and explanation of problem one, I'm going to talk about taxes. So I'm going to say that there is a tax burden placed on people because people are around for a longer period of time, so there are more taxes to pay. And as an example of this, I'm going to talk about increasing pension costs. And pension is an excellent keyword, excellent vocabulary word. It's very specific with the aging population, and the examiners would probably like the fact that this is included in the essay. Then as a second problem, I'm going to say that there are rising healthcare costs. And as an example of that, I'm going to talk about how aging populations are sick, so that results in more money for healthcare. Now, even if you don't necessarily agree with these statements, 
but it's easier for you to write about, go that route. So if I'm very interested in economics and healthcare costs, I'm just going to write about that because I can guarantee that I know that vocabulary, I know the topic, and it doesn't matter whether or not I agree with it necessarily. Now, as potential solutions for the tax burden and the rising healthcare costs, I'm going to look at paragraphs three and four. So I'm going to have an explanation and detail of solution one. I'm going to say a potential solution could be to increase the retirement age. Okay, this is directly related to the pension. And so my example will be something like people retire later, um, state pension will rise, and I could say something like elderly, which is also a good synonym, um, individuals will contribute knowledge to society. Okay, and we'll look at this a bit later. These are just my general initial ideas. The second solution in terms of the rising healthcare costs, I'm going to say that a potential solution could be to promote health programs uh, or medical advances. So my example of this, I'll say something like with medical advances, elderly people can work longer, stay healthier, and I could also say advances will pave the way, that's a good phrase, for future generations and societies. Now, the fact that I have this phrase, pave the way, um, I thought about it, it just came to me, so I wanted to write it down quickly so as not to forget it. Usually, if you don't write down something that comes into your mind immediately, you're going to forget it and you're probably not going to use it in the essay. So if you're thinking of these phrasal verbs or collocations that you want to use, make sure you write them down so you can include them. Now for the conclusion, I'm going to talk about my main points and my main points were increasing pension and healthcare costs basically can be solved by increasing retirement age, and medical advances. That is everything I talked about up here. And something important about this topic, um, I'll think about that. I will definitely relate it to society because in paragraph four, I talked about future generations and society. So the fact that this is relating to the future will lead in nicely to this conclusion. So this is my quick outline, again, with time and practice, this whole process of reading, underlining, outlining, making outline notes should take no more than five minutes. So don't be deterred if I took my time today. I just wanna make sure that we are on the right track. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and start writing. Okay, so I'm going to start with my introduction. Remember, I'm going to rewrite the first statement here. And I do have life expectancy increasing and developed society, but let's see if I have some other synonyms up my sleeve. I'm going to put this first sentence in bold and I'll say people in industrialized nations can expect to live longer than ever before. Now I've changed it a bit. I see industrialized nations, which is very similar to the developed world. It's an excellent synonym. Keep in mind that I have used the British spelling. You could also write this with a Z. All right, so that is my rewritten question. People in industrialized nations can expect to live longer than ever before. It's very similar to in the developed world, the average life expectancy is increasing. Perfect, I have set the scene for my essay. Now to go on to what I'm actually going to write about, I would say, although there will be some negative consequences associated with this shift, societies can take steps to diminish these effects. So I've used a nice connective here, although, and I've initiated this topic of negative consequences Yet, I also say societies can take steps to diminish these effects. Now, notice how I have basically introduced a problem solution essay, but I haven't said these are the problems and these are my solutions. 
because that is very bland and will not get you any points for a lexical resource. So each time you practice, really start thinking of different ways that you could say these various things. All right, so now on to my second paragraph, and I'll put my topic sentence in bold again. Basically, I'm going to talk about the aging population and the rising cost because I'm talking about taxes and healthcare costs, so money essentially. And I'm going to say the aging population will bring about rising costs to society. Bring about is an excellent phrase. I didn't want to just say cause. I wanted to think of different ways to say that. So I used this. And I'll continue and I'll say as citizens age and grow weaker, society's tax burden increases. Now this is B, okay? This is my explanation and detail of a problem. Now for my example, I'm going to say if a large amount of the population is elderly and retired, pension costs and taxes will increase, thus creating a burden for younger tax-paying individuals. So you see what I've done. This sentence right here is an example of the tax burden, okay? So it relates back to the tax burden. It also talks about increasing pension costs. I've also used a nice connector here, thus, which talks about results. Now I will go ahead and continue with rising healthcare costs, this explanation and example. And actually, the more I think about it, I could probably come up with a sentence that combines D and E, and that's fine if you can think of one sentence to combine both of these. If it works and if you're able to connect them well, go for it. So I'm going to go ahead and say, additionally, older members of society will require more specialized care as their health worsens, which will bring about higher medical costs due to increased demand. All right, and there you have it. I have essentially written one sentence that combines rising healthcare costs, aging populations are sick, more money for healthcare. And there you go. So let's move on to our third paragraph, the first solution. With my topic sentence, I'm basically going to shift the idea. And instead of talking about negative aspects, I'm going to talk about solutions. So I'm going to start with a very nice, however, there are some steps that both the government and individuals can take to mitigate these problems. Mitigate, great word. If you know, you've studied your vocabulary and your synonyms, try to use as much advanced vocabulary as you can. Make sure you understand it as well. I'll continue, and I'm going to be talking about increasing the retirement age. So since this is my first solution, I'm going to start with, firstly, an increase in the retirement age would offset increasing costs from older generations. That's my first solution. And now to give an example of that, I'm going to say, if people are able to retire later, the age for receiving a government-funded state pension would rise. I'm also going to add a little bit more here because I am thinking of a sentence that would flow well into paragraph four. And again, I have, the, I have the space because this paragraph should be more or less three to five sentences. So I'm going to continue and say, additionally, this extra time would allow the aging population to pass on knowledge and help train younger workers in their respective fields. And I believe this will help me go into the next solution and also work well with my conclusion. And of course, I had this sentence ready. I wanted to talk about how this extra time would help, so I added it in there. I'm definitely within the guideline for sentences and timing. 
Now, the second solution, I'm right here, paragraph four, and I'm going to talk about promoting health programs. So my topic sentence will be promoting programs and initiatives in the health care industry could also alleviate potential risks from the aforementioned problems. Aforementioned problems, great vocabulary. Basically, I'm talking about these problems in the second paragraph. And so my explanation in detail would be to promote medical advances and health problems. And I would say, if the healthcare industry prepares for the increase in the aging population, the potential problem of higher taxes could be avoided. I'm using a modal here because it's speculation, so that's great. And as an example, I'm going to say, for example, by promoting advances in medical programs, elderly people may be able to live with better health standards and contribute to society for a longer period of time. Okay, and now just to close this, because I want to talk about future generations as well, I might say these medical advances would also help future generations as they get older. Okay, and there we have it. That is my second solution. So I have presented my two problems here, a solution for each problem. Now all that's left to do is wrap up. So in bold as something just to sum up, I would say various measures can be taken in order to offset potential problems from the aging population. So I've talked about how there are problems. I've talked about the various measures, my solutions. And as something about society, I could say it is crucial that both individuals and governments work together in this venture. Because again, I'm tying it back to the fact that individuals and society were included in the question. Of course, we talked about individuals and society. So the problems regard individuals and society in general, so that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that I closed it and that everything really flows well together. So let's go ahead and briefly analyze this. First, we're going to look at our word count. The word count is 282 words, which definitely satisfies the 250 word minimum without going too overboard with it. It's pretty much perfect. It's a great length. And our topic sentences are in bold. These are very general and open up our paragraph for a more detailed explanation. In terms of the grammar, the modal was used because in problem and solution essays, you want to suggest and propose various measures and the modals are perfect for that. So always keep that in mind. I also used various conditionals. So if you look here, we see if a large amount of the population is elderly, pension costs will increase and the vocabulary was on point. I've got a lot of great connectives. I have nice phrasal verbs such as pass on or bring about and really nice high level vocabulary words itself such as mitigate. So these are things you always want to keep in mind when writing your essay. In general, do I agree with the points in this essay? No, not really, I don't agree with all of them, but I wrote them because they came quick to me and I just found it easier to write about due to my interest in economics and financials. So that is the route I went. I hope you found this helpful. I just want to wrap up quickly and leave you with some tips and reminders for this essay. Okay, so to wrap up, remember that the first thing you want to do is read and understand your question. This is very important to get an overall idea of the question itself, but also the question type so that you can plan your outline effectively and make great notes. Now today, it was obvious that we had a problem and solution question type, but watch out for those tricky words like measures instead of solutions. Now, for this specific question, don't just list off problems without explaining 
potential solutions, or without explaining your problems. That is something the examiners will look for. They want you to be able to think critically with the information given. Remember to use varied grammar structures and vocabulary, your phrasal verbs, your modals, especially for this question type. And don't forget your 250 word minimum. You've got about 40 minutes if you've designated 20 minutes for your writing task one. And also this is really important. Spend time on the body of the essay. So your problems and your solutions. Depends on the outline you use, but make sure that your middle paragraphs are really organized well and that you're not spending so much time on the introduction and the conclusion. All right, so that's it for today.